All right. What's up? What's up? What's up, everyone? Planet Xbox Podcast, episode 22. We are finally back. It's been a uh, a long uh, break for me, but uh, we'll get into all that stuff. Uh, shout out to Attic uh, for holding it down um, uh, on, on these YouTube streets with all the vids, uh, the podcast appearances, and the content uh, that you do every day. Happy that you're able to join me again after such um, what feels like a month uh, hiatus. Um, how you been? Doing pretty good. Uh, obviously, you know, we got some some stuff to talk about. Did you watch the Halo trailer and the Fallout trailer? Uh, no, I have not, actually. Did, did, I feel like that just happened. I thought, like... Happened like an hour and a half ago. Yeah, so I thought... So I didn't get to see any of that. Yeah, actually, I just finished right before I could jump on the computer. Uh, I had just finished watching the Phil Spencer, um, I think, interview that he has at this event, CCXP, um, the Brazil event that's going on. Um, I watched that because I thought there were some news. I think they announced that 12 million Starfield players or something like that. Um, Did you watch the uh, Jess Gordon one? I mean, read the Jess Corden one. I read the Jess Corden one, and yeah, a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about today is pretty much, and as it relates to what led to that. Uh, but I'm definitely going to need a lot of your help, uh, for sure. Uh, but the thing is, is that reason why I'm, I'm I I got I'm aware of what what happened with Fallout because I was getting notifications on like when it, I guess as soon as I guess the trailer drop um, for the series um, and Halo. Uh, two things. The, the, it's coming back February eighth, right? The, the Paramount show. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that happened uh, today. So the thing is, is that there was a couple of things. And what's going on with Grand Theft Auto? I keep seeing these mean like Tuesday. Out. The uh, trailers popping out. Okay. Okay. So obviously, you know, people people are really excited about that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think enough times went by where I'm not particularly excited. Mm-hmm. I but I know. Once that first trailer drops, that's when my excitement's going to start building up. Fair enough. You know, you want to hear something crazy? Um, I've never beaten a Grand Theft Auto game. You didn't. You've never beat any of them. Any of them. Man, I, I, I if I was you, I'd edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, man. Uh, I, I've, I've owned. Um. I've I played Vice City. I played Grand Theft Auto 3, obviously, back when they were out. San Andreas was the closest one I think I ever came to beat. And I think I got to like the final section, but I can't take credit for beating it. I think my one of my cousins uh ended up beating it because he would we would play it and then he ended up just playing. And remember, this is like memory card days, right? So he would mm-hmm. just he just played it on. So we I got to a point where when everything sort of hits the fan with uh like the 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 gang itself um and he ended up finishing it off so i I could never take really credit for uh uh beating it and i never attempted to replay it uh um like i yeah i've never really attempted to replay it and then grand theft auto 4 the one that came out for the 360 in 2008 i i don't even i know i purchased it uh but i don't require ever beating it um and then the Grand Theft Auto Five, um, yeah, I, mean, I didn't beat it on Xbox One. I didn't, I didn't even, I don't even know if I even played a significant amount outside of like the heist area, like the opening uh, bank robbery missions. Um, and I think what, what stalled me out of Grand Theft Auto is when it first came out, the, their loading times were stupid long. Um, so I just never. GTA uh, Five is still like that to a really, point. Is it really? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, nah, I never beat it. But I'm looking, I'm still looking forward to it. I don't really hype like GTA to those degrees, you know what I mean? I was more so of those GTA clones, like any GTA like game that came out in that same period, like the Saints Rose, the Getaways, and um, like any open like word that kind of took some DNA from GTA, I would complete those, right? Um, why I don't know, it's not that I thought GTA was bad, it's just that. I just uh, never like played them to to the end. Um, we got Patreon question uh, just just one this week, um, but it, which reasonably so people probably didn't know we were going to be going uh, uh, putting out a uh, PX uh, uh, this week. But Alexander King, Alex, that's that's uh, my uh, uh, the one I did the uh, 
Jiggy Durag song with shout out to him. He says, let's keep it a bean, no clit. Y'all wish Xbox had the fandom that PlayStation has right now? Question mark. No, I don't. All right. Absolutely, I don't. He says, now everyone wants to remote play because PlayStation dropped a new device. Folks weren't rushing to get backbones before. Do you think the issue was folks not wanting to use their phones as the screen or they just didn't know it was a thing? Oh, that's a good question, man. How do you think it's just the hype? It's 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 hype. It's hype. You know? Yeah, it, it, there's a difference between people asking when you first get your phone. Mm -hmm. You know, when you first get a phone, uh, same thing. You're hyped to use it. You're hyped to to go on. But let's see how these people are, are using these devices in six months. Mm -hmm. You know, they giving you the option to play your games on your phone isn't the same as letting you buy something new. That, that 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 they call like the new car smell or whatever it's yeah. called it's like yeah. the hypeness of owning something new like there's a difference and you can't replicate that giving people the option to play something on on, on their phone isn't going to give them that feeling of having something new i get what you're saying right um i bought into different like backbones different controllers to play some games here and there it works my son does it every now and then um but i think it's, it's two things it when people were doing remote play it was primarily you know you know xbox uh people because you had to buy the extra devices to do it and you know uh when xbox does something it's not really all that hot uh so when PlayStation drops, a, they dropped a, a new hardware, something separate, and people has this, uh, uh, this mesmer, PlayStation has this mesmerizing effect. They release something, then people has to buy it, you know, um, regardless of its capabilities. Um, I think, um, I think uh, the, a lot of it is, like, people knew it was a thing. People weren't interested, and people weren't interested until PlayStation did it. And um, and I think that's why people are, are trying to appreciate it now. But this stuff has been around for ages. And um, it's just it's either PlayStation fandom or Xbox tax. <laughs> that's how. Um... It, it, and, and to me, too, it just comes a matter of, you know, obviously the PlayStation has a bigger fan base. I mean, it it's so fantastic this year. Xbox is behind what they sold with the mm -hmm. xbox one but it's just like that means i want a a replicate of the fan base no i don't yeah. you know it, it, xbox delivers a different product it, they just do and you know I, I don't even you know it's funny smooth when people say you know they they don't have good games but when you look at all their games they're like 80s and above besides uh besides redfall yeah it's like they don't have the games you want to play, and that's okay. But to say they don't have good games is just, it's its not really a, it's not a genuine take. Now, obviously, they have games that dip into the 70s. You know, I think, I think the Minecraft Legends mm -hmm. hit into the 70s, but those have been very far in between. And I get it. Some people think just because they don't have, you know, true, like, quote unquote, like true exclusives to the platform. That's another thing they knocked them for, but it's like you can't take away Wasteland 3, Psychonauts, Outer Worlds. And what's funny is besides Wasteland, they've all they were all game of the year contenders. Wasn't Psychonauts a game of the year contender? Yeah, it was nominated, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, look, you could you can knock it because that was on, on on other platforms, and that's fair. But to say that the studios that Microsoft owns have no games, I feel is very incorrect. Yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, it's um, it, it's it's a shame, pretty much. So today's episode, obviously, I've been out of the limelight, um, a lot of uh, out of the you know commotion uh, that's been going on in regards to you know anything honestly uh, gaming related. If you guys didn't hear, I've been away because uh, I had like a, uh, I lost my um, uh, grandmother, and I've been I kind of just took some time away from you know social media, YouTube, spent more time with my family, my wife, my kids, uh, who's been very, very supportive. And I'm still going through it. We're just about to, you know, wrap up 
a few things and and we all got to like kind of keep it um moving but it was something that uh hurt really bad and um um again appreciate everybody who uh, showed love but i just really wanted to focus that time um on my you know my love uh, my my loved ones you know what i mean spending more time with my kids spending more time uh, with my wife for sure um, um she's been a, a rock uh for me um through this and then getting closer to my my mom's uh her siblings which are in my aunts and, and uncles because we kind of have a a distant uh relationship so I, I put a lot of time going uh and seeing them and, and, and speaking to them more often than i normally do uh but um it's life but i wanted to obviously get back to the things that you know i do because you know you dwell into something too long and it leads to depression and stuff like that um so um you know i i eventually when i got back and you know got comfortable um got to start to play some video games uh i, I haven't really put together any videos right now but um, uh, I will be working on that. Uh, the first game that I beat in you know, since then was uh, Spider-Man 2. And now that we're looking at the calendar, Attic, Attic, it's, it's December 2nd. Um, I don't, I, I'm not, there's no any really games that I'm, I feel like that I'm missing out on that I want to play. I feel like there's about three games I really would like to play before the end of the year. Those games include RoboCop, uh, the new Terminator, um, and uh may, may i'm still not sure about alan wake and i'm in the, still in the middle of assassin's creed um which i'm not liking too much as uh as much as this is not like i i prefer my rpg assassin's creed it's not this uh this uh cheap callback to the, the classic uh what it what would you say is you i probably know this answer but what is your game of the year and what do you think is the default uh game of the year right now it's the same Baldur's gate three Borders Gate Three, okay. Yeah, it's just look. Has everything in Borders Gate been done before? Absolutely. Uh, you can argue has it been done better though. You know, Borders Gate took a concept, rolled with it, and and just gave us what the people that play that type of game want. They didn't try to make it to this new thing. They didn't try to like explode with microtransactions mm -hmm. you know because it just shows it's, it's corporate greed that is ruining the industry mm -hmm. because when developers come out and they actually give you a product and they don't upcharge you 24 7 just to look different in the game you see how wildly successful they are you know people ain't, it's like as a companies aren't okay anymore with just making a lot of money they 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 want to make more money next quarter than this quarter you know make a 28 billion is not good enough <laughs> smooth they got to make 25 billion next quarter <laughs> no that, that'd be that's 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 true everything has been really about money and 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 how to continue to monetize and that's why a lot of games are having shorter you know lifespans uh that's why a lot of studios that are opening are having uh quicker expiration dates um so my game of the year, I, I think, you know, I'm with you on, I believe Baldur Gate is going to be the, the ultimate, you know, game of the year. It is what it is. Um, Starfield has, has been my game of the year. Um, and I completed Spider-Man 2. I think I do think Spider-Man 2 is really, really good. Uh, I think they did a good job with that. Um, but, uh, and, and it deserves this, whatever nominations uh, that it's gotten. But for me personally, um, of all, the entire year, um, and unfortunately, I didn't dwell, dwell into as much games as I thought I would uh, because of different things that happened in my life between work and the stuff with my you know, grandma and the things that I was studying for and budget season and stuff like that. Like the back half of the year, the best quarter of the year, I couldn't really believe in games. So the last major game I ended up beating was like Starfield. And then I think I took on Mortal Kombat and then Spider-Man after that. But um, no, Starfield is so far by far the best game I personally played. Uh, this year is the most I had the fun with the, and, had the the addiction factor, um, and bro, um, I mean, and regardless, what's game of the year? This has been one of the best years in gaming in a long time. Yeah, I agree. Though the game awards. Now you guys never had a. There was uh, I wasn't around to do a surviving the game awards nominations. I probably it, all things been normal. I've definitely would have 
done that. Um, dude, um, I look at the nominations for the uh, Game of the Year awards, and um, and actually the overall award show. I'm not impressed, and I'm not happy. The, the thing is, for this for 2023 to be such a great year, I feel like it did not translate into the the Game Awards, not in the Game of the Year nominees, and not into the overall nominees. I feel like for all the great games that came out, I'm not impressed by the finalist of all these games, and uh, I I was very disappointed in the Game of the Year nominees. Um, as far as like you know, whole oh. like the Resident Evil Four thing, it, it kind of made me like was like you couldn't really of all the games that released you you couldn't pick a re, you there was no game better than the remake well i was playing octopath traveler 2 and when i'm playing this i'm like why didn't this game get nominated for something like this it's such a phenomenal game and it's it's just frustrating man because you know why you feel that way because they nominated the same three games for almost every category yes that okay that's what it is because when I was doing my votes, I was like, dude, there's some of these things I don't even feel like voting for because none of these earn, like, for example, some of the best games I played this year personally were obviously uh, Starfield, Liza P, Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Uh, uh, what game really surprised us that we played together? Oh, my God. Uh, uh, Dead Island. Dead, uh, Dead Island 2. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like. That was I, a good game. I thought they they did their damn thing with that game, and then I'm looking at these nominees, and I'm like, bro, we really. I was like, I, I was don't... actually surprised Dead Island got in there at all. Yeah, it got the uh, it got one best nomination. multiplayer, I think. Yeah, or best action adventure, or something like that. Yeah, so I I wasn't really feeling that, man. Oh my, like, like the game of the year. Um... Best action, like they're they got these. Uh, I don't like the the player choice nominations. They put all these reoccurring um games. Uh, I feel like the games that got uh, nominated for best ongoing, I felt like they did that one a, a disservice because I feel like they nominate the same games for that one every year. And I feel like yo, do they like Sea of Thieves? I feel like is being slighted. Uh. They, I, I feel like Sea of Thieves has been slighted. I feel like State of Decay has been slighted. I feel like Halo Infinite has been slighted. And it's not that, like, I understand I'm I'm an Xbox, uh, you know, fan, and I prefer Xbox. So, yeah, there's some biases. But the fact I'm that also... Sea of Thieves and Halo didn't get, at least one of them to get in there is just, especially Halo Infinite. And, yeah. and, you know, it's crazy is people sitting there talking all this smack, but it's just like Halo Infinite is having such a an increase in how they're handling the brand and this is coming from someone that i said very i think me and you argue that they should have ha- delayed halo mm-hmm. yeah. so it's just like it, you can sit there and you can argue that the game didn't deserve it because of the way it launched an 87 but people keep forgetting that that game was an 87 on metacritic yeah or 86 one of those two it, it, and it's just like so i guess now, now, you can argue that the, the games as a service aspect of Halo failed, but what I would argue is what games as a service was successful out the, out, out the gate. I couldn't, I could, you could name me one, actually. Not one. Maybe Apex Legend was the, was the best launch as a games as a service. But besides that, Fortnite, uh, even Fortnite. Well, remember what did, Fortnite had to do to even get popular. They, that, they, they, they launched their game. It was trash. Nobody was feeling it. And then PUBG came out, and they literally made a beta version of PUBG in the, out of their Fortnite game, and then that took off. Mm-hmm. So it's like people can argue. That's fine. Uh, I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, but at the same time, it's just like, let's call, you know, let's call an Apple an Apple, man. You know, Halo Infinite deserved to be in that ongoing support category absolutely. it did absolutely i played uh the, the, those halo 3 maps man it's nostalgia galore dude i uh, me and my son um when the first game actually the first game i resumed decided to play when i decided like hey I, I feel like playing some video games it was me and my son we played halo 3 and we were on it uh for some hours and it was just I, the what they're doing and it's smart that they're doing that they put the halo 3 maps back and they have like the halo, halo 3 celebration mode with the season Next week, uh, they're going to be bringing what King of the Hill and um, a firefight, which is firefight first came, yeah, in Halo 3. Um, that's like their horde mode, like the PVE. Mm-hmm. 
that's like that's epic. Like in I and 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 I've been playing, you know, I I I the way I play Halo is how I play always play Halo. It's like I can is it's, it's a game I would never uninstall. It's always a reason to go back and I I'll never not know how to play Halo. Uh, I recently in, uh, installed uh, my uncle's uh birthday uh was uh about on the, was on the 29th or 28th uh but all he does is play call of duty so i had to buy i didn't i we installed modern warfare 2 because i didn't obviously I, i'm not buying modern warfare 3 call of duty as a game is just the, the you hard don't have drive to buy space. it i have it you, you do yeah okay then i'll install it Shit, yeah they, they sent me a review they sent me a review copy damn that's how wow i didn't even realize that so i didn't, wow damn but the game is too big 220 gigs man yeah it's uh, it's it's gigantic it's massive so we played that. I played that for about three hours with my uncle and my cousin, and um, you know, it was really good. And I didn't realize how I'm that I'm actually a decent player in Call of Duty. I just don't like playing it all the time. It's like, but um, but and I don't like the, the gun management. I I can't manage the attachments and stuff like that. Just give me. I need one to find a gun that I like, and I'll stick with that until I find a better gun. But I'm not all that adjusting and all this other stuff. No, nah, I'm not going to do all that. Um. But yeah, man, another thing that happened that was pretty interesting, um, uh, Clobro, he put together a nominations for Xbox uh, Studio of the Year that he's doing, uh, the first party Studio of the Year. He had four nominations. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I want to know because you you've tried to do something like it's not really of a weird but like you did like the rankings with the studios mm -hmm. with the Xbox first or you either did the studios or IPs or something like that. Um, I've done the IPs yet. Uh, I've done I've ranked all Xbox One exclusives yeah. and I've ranked the studios of Xbox including ABK and people got upset with me because I put like turn ten as like a C rank studio. What's funny is like people want my rankings to be their rankings that. That's just not the case. Like, look, I, I put no. I think I put Turn Ten as a as a D rated studio. So I don't play those games. Yeah. Why would I put them as a high ranking when I don't play those games? Now, if if we're ranking where as an industry wise where these games should be, then yeah, I would probably. But my ranking, I'm not gonna rank something high that I don't play. Doesn't mean it's a bad game. Just to me, I don't play them. Now, after playing Motorsport a little bit, and I, I was always scared to play those games because I felt like they wanted you to be perfect in those. Like, yeah. oh, you know, people are like, oh, don't, you know, if you guys like casual games, play Forza Horizon. Don't touch this Motorsport. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it did, like, that kind of like scared, like scared me away from trying their franchises out. Yeah. So. I, I get what you're saying, and that's what also kept me away from um, the, the mainline series of Forza. I thought it was like you have to be perfect. You have to know the technical, the, te the, the technical aspects of circuit racing, and that I don't know. I just want to drive, so that's why, like my approach to a game like Forza Horizon, I'm more more invested. My approach to motorsport, I'll play. I'll just play arcade mode, or or, or, or I'm, I'm not playing. I'm not turning up the difficulty or anything like that. Um, or I'm playing with assist. Um, but I played a lot of this one. I th I think it looks good. I think it plays good, and I'm happy with it. But Clobro posted uh uh a game of the uh, Xbox Studio of the Year 2023. His nominations were, and I'm gonna try to get this on a screen. Um, I'm gonna try to get this on a screen. My uh, right quick. I just let's see what would happen if I can get this on screen what happens here let me just read it no, I, I got it here. It on. it's on the screen but yeah so it says uh the nominations are uh tangle game works uh for hi-fi rush in their uh, dlc ghostwire tokyo on xbox and uh, ghostwire tokyo spider thread so he has them nominated he has bethesda game studios for Starfield, Fallout 70, 70, Fallout 76, uh, Mutation Invasion, Fallout 76, Once in a Blue Moon, and Fallout 76, Atlantic City. He has 343 Industries for Halo Infinite, Echoes Within, and uh, Infection, Reckoning, and Firefight, and AI, so all their 2023 releases. And then he has World's Edge nomination for their console ports of Age of Empires 2, Age of Empires 4, 
and uh, the expansion to Age of Empires 4. My thing is, what do you think um, of these nomination lists and would, who would you have nominated in, in this case scenario? Or who do you think of his list would is deserving of this award? For this year? Yeah. Um, Tango Studio, definitely. Okay. I, I feel like Hi-Fi Rush... You know, here's the thing. You can be a fantastic studio and you can make one game and I would consider you great. But to be one of the best, you have to be a variety studio. You have to be able to make multiple genres, multiple good genres, not just you just popping something out there. Uh, Gorilla Game, I think the, they made Killzone and then went to Horizon. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good, good studio. You know, I don't think either one of those really vibe with me a whole lot. But I have to give them props that they're able to make that kind of product. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Tango going from the Evil Within to Hi-Fi Rush is a drastic difference in in what they're making. Mm -hmm. So I would have to give that to them. Uh, you know, Bethesda Software Studio, obviously. Regardless of how you feel about hey uh, about Starfield, it's still a fun game. It's still a great game. It's still uh, you know really engaging. I would have to give that to them. And three four three. I actually feel like they, they, they've done a good job getting people's interest back into the Halo franchise. Okay, yeah. Of this list, yeah, I would probably... I respect Tango because, um, you know, I thought Hi-Fi Rush was great. Uh, I thought Ghostwire Tokyo was... and I And I interviewed the... Uh, you did. The person, the director, and mm -hmm. really down-to-earth dude. Crazy is he's an American. Yeah, it was just... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's an American, and and like, it's crazy because you get a perspective that you don't normally get, like an American going to a Japanese studio, mm -hmm. and he he's having to fight for his respect in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Sounds about right, though. I ain't, I ain't gonna hold you. Think about it. I mean, I, that sounds about right. Um, I think uh, Tango, yes, yeah, really surprised me. Um. Even I'm not the biggest fan of the Evil Within at all. I tried to play it, and it's just, it's just, it's like Resident Evil for me. It's like I don't, I can't get in, I can't get through a Resident Evil game, no matter how short, how easy. I just their games don't really vibe with me. Um, so Evil Within was almost like the same scenario. It's just like, uh, uh and that's why I haven't, you know, did Alan Wake two yet. You know, and I know everybody's giving that game high praises, but Ghostwire Tokyo, I. Ultimately, I end up liking Ghostwire Tokyo more than I like Deathloop, and I respect a lot. Of and I know that's a whole different studio, but um, those were like you know new IPs out of you know Bethesda over the last couple of years. Um, so Ghostwire Tokyo, I enjoyed a lot. I played it twice, on, one on PC, one on Xbox. Beat it twice. Hi-Fi Rush, a great experience, um, and I think they're the most surprising. Um, they've earned their respect. Um, Bethesda, again, they're great. I want to see more from uh, Bethesda, but they make grand games, right? They make grand games. Their games uh, take a while to make. Their game is uh, my game of the year this year, but I, they they had one of the highest impact. Um, three four three. Uh man, I, I wouldn't have nominated World's Edge, but I, I mean, I guess I think more so of a shock value. I probably go with uh, Tangle GameWorks if I'm looking at these, but I think I would have nominated you know other uh, uh, publishers as well. Um, I mean, not publishers, developers as well that uh, had you know an impact or that was able to release things uh like like again rare goes under the radar for some strange reason um they've it, it, they've constantly supported their uh games and, and and made sea of thieves so fresh to the point where i really need to play sea of thieves um they've uh i think um i, I think undead labs they've done amazing uh support uh with their games but um, and if people forget, you know, Mojang, they released the, the, the Minecraft uh, Legends. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like ultra popular or anything like that, but it was still, you know, a timely release. Uh, you know, Redfall, um, Arcane, I know people don't want to do that. It had a bad launch, but they, they didn't give up on the game. And that's one of the things that I appreciate. They didn't give up on the game. We finally got the game how we wanted it, 60 FPS. 
and they still continue to support uh, that game. But um, yeah, this is a good list. Shout, shout out to uh, Clobro. I think Tangle probably runs away with this if if this is going to be up to the players. Either Tangle or Bethesda uh, end up, ends up running away uh, with. I this. think Tango deserves a little bit more. Uh, because as much as I love Starfield, I feel like the biggest issues with Starfield is some of the simple design choices that they made with Starfield, such as like a good tutorial to explain you how Starfield functions as a game. So I saw more people having issues with just onboarding ships and, and, and locations on the game. There wasn't a lot of like information. Sure, they kind of told you, but they didn't really make sure you understood. I I don't feel like, I didn't feel at one time during um hi-fi rush that i ever had issues like that and like you know i felt like they did a really good job on, on explaining how people are on the map with you but they're not there mm -hmm. they did a really remember the last mission where you finally get to that last level when everyone's there helping like yeah. like the actual people not just like physical holograms yeah yeah no no yeah yeah it was uh um, they did uh there's a lot going on with that game um, uh, that I've definitely um, enjoyed, but but I understand everybody's like gripes of the, the simple things that they feel that the a game is sort of outdated. Uh, but um, what, the thing is, also I wanted to talk about is um, and 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 you're involved heavily in this um. It's, a couple right, it's uh, Xbox tax. The Xbox tax, man. Oh my god! Can you school me it, of why this became a thing? Well, what happened? Is it was it was probably sparked because of the game of, game awards, right? It was one of the things that made it spark. I think uh, the Call of Duty thing is also what made it spark. Yeah, for some I reason, think, this is the worst rated Call of Duty. For some reason. Yeah, I think Gaming Bolt. And the couple articles they wrote made it spark. There's a lot of reasons that, that made it spark it. And I think there's an issue that we're having, especially in our direct community, mm -hmm. where people are taking multiple aspects of Xbox tax and they're putting them together. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I, I think in order to have the, like a serious conversation about it, you have to like define what do you think Xbox tax is smooth? I think how I all right, the Xbox tax to me is and do you believe in the Xbox tax? That's another mm, thing. Yeah. So the Xbox tax is anything associated with Xbox, whether it be uh, platform um, software, first party or even third party receiving unnecessary criticism or not scoring um, in a way that a game would score if it wasn't made by um, Xbox. I believe there's an Xbox. I I won't use the term tax, I guess, but if if we're calling it Xbox tax, and yes, um, it's just media bias, and I've always felt there was a bias towards or a bias against, not towards, but a bias against Xbox for some strange reason. There's always been an Xbox. It's whether it's the how the articles are written, whether, for example. When X, when something negative about Xbox do some, whether it's a price hike or a privacy change or something that is unfavorable favorable in a consumer eyes, you get several several upon several articles about it, right? You know, like it's like the world stops for the day to cover this. When if PlayStation does the equivalent, like a price increase on of their services or anything like that, it's You'll get the article, but it's not pushed. It's like, all right, the article's out, job's done, whatever. Same thing with um, uh, the, oh man, the game, like it, the games. When Xbox gets a marketing deal, right, with the game, it's, it's like that game unfairly gets criticized. Or it, it, it unfairly gets like this negative connotation, the reaction to the game, whether it's a marketing day deal, whether it's a timed exclusivity. Um, there, when a developer decides that's not owned by Xbox, decides to go ex Xbox exclusive for a short period of time, 
they're interviewed differently. They're pressured. Why? When is it coming to this? When is it coming to that? And they're, they kind of have to clarify that they're not a permanent Xbox exclusive. When PlayStation gets a timed exclusive from a third party studio, they don't get questioned. It's like, it's like Final Fantasy. Or even just when they, when they bought Bethesda. Oh, it's, it's not right if they lock these games down. They, they've been on platforms for years, but you know, Sony can go in there and take Final Fantasy, which has been on the Xbox platform since 13. So that's 13. Uh, that's 13, two, 13, uh, lightning returns. That's 15. And now, uh, you know, we're on a remake and we're on Final Fantasy 16, but it was okay for them to do that. Now, obviously, they've had Final Fantasy on their brand the longest, but that's besides the point. For like a good 10 years, games all known as Final Fantasy came on Xbox and it was not looked down at all for them to secure 7 Remake. Yeah. Um, the Also, the thing about that is how many journalists are lining up in front of Square Enix and asking about the availability of Forspoken, Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 7, um, whatever Dragon Quest game, whatever, and its availability on Xbox. How many people and lined feel, up to ask like- Capcom about Street Fighter uh, five on Xbox when they launched as a sole PlayStation exclusive. You know what I mean? It's how many people are asking about Stellar Blade? How many people are asking about um uh Rebirth. Man, Rebirth. Yeah. It's Home Stars. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's the thing is is that when these things happen with Xbox, think about it. Uh What's that? Stalker 2. It's been delayed so many years, but when that was first announced, they got questioned about a PlayStation release. They tried to dodge them, but they've gotten questions all the time about a PlayStation release. Freaking, Bro- um, what's that game uh, that came out uh, in the first quarter during that Series X launch uh, with the woman? Like a Dragon? No, nah, not Like a Dragon. It was the... Uh, uh, medium? The Medium. Yes. The Medium. They got like they got pressure. You know what happened with Tomb Raider, bro? Like, and, and already Elder Scrolls getting you know Indiana Jones and all this other stuff. Like that's all being like, thank you. Uh, all those are all like things that are happening. Watch when Doom gets announced, bro. When when finally when Doom Doom finally gets announced, uh, the next one. And it, it, to my knowledge, I don't think I think it's an Xbox PC game. It's not a, a PlayStation game. High Five Rush, the Shadow Drop. Remember that? Mm-hmm. So it's uh yes, I do believe there's an an Xbox tax has always existed, and that's why Xbox has to work twice as hard. Their games have to be exceptional to earn an average grade. You know what I mean? Like, think about it. Halo Infinite is an 87 to people, right? But I feel like anybody not named 343, I feel like if Bungie releases Halo Infinite as is. If um, uh, Respawn releases Halo Infinite as is, it's a 90. It's a 90. I feel like, um, what's the other game uh, that uh, came out? There's, I feel like there's some games, like Gears Gears 5. Like the, Gears 5, I thought was like, so To this day, awesome... I don't understand how Gears didn't get nominated for Game of the Year that year. To this that day. That year, yeah. I don't that understand. year, 2019 was it... not a great year by any stretch of the imagination. I think Death Stranding got in it over. Death Stranding got it. Uh, got nominated. Um, Game of the Year twenty nominations. I know I've looked this up before, but let's let's read yeah, twenty nineteen what, what yep. the nominations were. That was a year right, of Death Stranding so, and Days Gone. I think right. Sekiro Shadow Die Twice deserved it because okay. it won. Yeah, it won. Yep. Control. Death Stranding. Yep. The Outer Worlds, which I could kind of see that. Okay. Um, Resident Evil 2, that deserved to be there. The remake. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Okay. Maybe. But Super but Smash it, Bros. came out in what, 2018? I don't know. Remember, it came, that was a game that came out the year prior and then got shoehorned in because it missed the first deadline because it came out too too late. So they, so they had enough room to add a 2018 game in there. That, that's how, yeah. but Gears... Life is straight, because so Concrete, uh, Concrete Genie came out that year. 
Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen had like an expansion. Mm-hmm. Um, Katana Zero, I remember a lot of people love that game. Uh, we also had Borderlands 3. I think that probably would have deserved it over Control. And I even like that game that much. Uh, Astro Chain? Look, people love that game. Why? That's pl- the Metro true. Exodus? Yeah. I mean, th- this is this is ridiculous. Mortal Kombat 11? So um, Super Mario, uh, Super Mario Maker Two. What well, did did they get like an indie game of the year that year? No, they didn't. There was no indie game that year. There was Sekiro: Shadow Dies Twice, Control, Death Stranding, The Outer Worlds, Resident Evil Two, and Super Smash Brothers. And best game direction was Control, Outer Worlds, Resident Evil Two. Uh, Death, Str- Death Stranding won game, best game direction. Of Which I could kind of see that a little yeah. bit. Just a little bit. I could kind of see uh, games like that's never really been made, so I could kind of see why that would get best game direction. Uh, I would have personally gave it Resident Evil 2 because I felt like that was the first one really pushing high-demand remakes, so that would make more sense because that's what we actually wanted. Uh, Sekiro... Sekiro is a good game, but it's just more from software stuff, you know, just in a different kind of skin. It's still a good game. Uh, Disco Elysium, I remember that's like an 88, 89 on Metacritic. People want to go off of Metacritic because people love doing that unless it's unless it's against their narrative and then they just completely act like Metacritic doesn't exist. Uh, you know, uh, it does look like at least Gears 5 got into the best performance. Oh, let me look. Gears 5. So it got into best audio design, best performance, uh, best action game, which Devil May Cry 5 looks like it won it, which I could kind of see that a little bit. Yeah, so I mean, th- there you go. It got nominated three times. And uh, it wasn't nominated just, for Gotti. It's a, uh, again, yeah, I, just, I just didn't agree with that because I felt like. I felt like Gears 5 was a better game than Death Stranding, and it was a better game than Control. And if you remember correctly, Control Metacritic, it was mad low. Spoiler alert. It was mad low. 82. 82. So Lord and Starfield and got nominated. Yeah, and then Death Stranding. It was 88. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. It's mad low. 82. Damn. See, you're thinking of <laughs> yeah. Death yeah. Stranding. You're thinking Death Stranding, the director's cut, yeah, you're which right. is an 85. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And that came out a year later to support the PS5. Wow. Wow. And you know what's funny? Wow. I feel like... I feel like... Control... The media. That's why I don't 100% agree with not explaining how these things are picked. You know, because to me, yeah, I, I get Jeff's like, oh, you know, I don't pick these, but how do you pick them? Because that, that's important. If you're just picking outlets and people that have more symmetry of, of thinking the way you do, that's essentially you picking. There's not a... There's not a... a a process to get into there to what I've seen. Now, if there was a way where, you know, I could hit up uh, Jeff Keeley, show him, here's our numbers, here's our reach, let us in as a, as a nomination, then I would be a little bit more on, okay, there is a balancing system. But he's never showed me that there's a balancing system. So what I've seen, it's whatever Jeff Keeley decides he wants on there. And then what's funny is, I looked, let, let, let me look at... Uh, the the game awards which is interesting so we just established that uh that death stranding was a um is was one of the um the what uh, was one of the nominations in 2019 Kojima's on the the fucking board 
<laughs> so how does that make sense? Yeah. Is it like to me? It's like it'd be one of those things where it's like, okay, Kojima, if you want to be part of this, none of your games could ever go into this event because that's a conflict of interest. But it feels like Jeff Keighley is okay with breaking, you know, how serious we should take this if it's beneficial to him or not. And that that that's my biggest thing. It's just like it doesn't feel a hundred percent genuine. It just doesn't. So let let let's go over. Let's go over the the advisory board. Now, people can sit there and tell me that these individuals have no influence on the video game awards and what direction it goes in. You're lying to yourself. You're delusional. So you got the CEO of Activision. Well, no, the president, not the CEO. You got the CEO of AMD, which I can see her being a good person on here because she doesn't directly make games. You know what I'm saying? You got the president of EA. You got Epic Games. Just Epic Games. And then uh, r- somewhere random, at least when you talk about you know, EA, Activision, at least when you look at them, you're like, okay, you know, I guess they make games in the industry. They're big publishers. They're not the ones that actually make the games. They just publish the games. Now, they do have a say on how some of these games get published, depending if they own the studio. But then you get this random fucking Kojima. Or just a, a head of a studio. And then Phil Spencer, then Doug Bowser. And then you just got a random co-chairman and co-founder of Riot Games. And then Rockstar, Stoney, uh, it says a dude from Tencent on here, the CEO of Ubisoft. Now, I know what he's thinking. Look, this is the Video Game Awards. The whole industry is going to choose where this goes. But to me, this just screams easy to corrupt. How can we really take an organization seriously when it comes to something like, you know, where where these this money's going if i remember correctly who is uh who's publishing alan wake 2 uh 505 or epic or epic games epic games epic games epic games mm-hmm. epic games is is the one doing it now let me let me find it just to be on the set just so i know for a fact it's epic games i'm pretty sure it's epic games though it's just like when you look at stuff like that it's just like who is publishing uh Alan Wake to Epic Games. So you mean to tell me that I can take a game of the year contender seriously when their game is on there. And, and I and I understand people are like Attic, this isn't Phil's on there. Why isn't Starfield? Well, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. But normally how things like this goes is there's another organization between them and this. And they can't directly control what's going on in that organization. There's something else running it. For instance, if it went this way, when the discussion on cloud went, they wouldn't have cared if I, if if Microsoft was controlling it. What did they do though, Smooth? They said, "I want you to have Ubisoft do it. We need someone between you and the cloud computing, which is going to be Ubisoft. We need that to make sure you're not in control over that. That's up to them." Yeah. Microsoft agreed. Yeah. So it's just like it is what it is. I'm not sitting there saying that the gaming, the video game awards is all corrupt. I'm not. I'm just saying that I have questions and no one wants to answer them. Yeah. No, no, you're absolutely right. Um, I'm not uh the I feel like I haven't been the biggest fan of the Game of the Year uh awards, and I knew it was doom and gloom when um Jeff Kelly started tweeting like, "Hey, I don't make any of the decisions." Da 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 da, because uh, he anticipated probably a backlash for the lack of Starfield. The Xbox tax is real. People need to stop pretending that it doesn't exist. You know, I'm not going to. Hey, you know, it's there. funny. I had conversations with people mm-hmm. in, in our community. I'm not going to call out names because I don't do that. Yeah, but they were telling me the Xbox tax is real. But then when the Twitter f- backing 
hit the Twitter space. Mm-hmm. They changed that up real quick. Oh, I actually, I don't think it's real. Yeah, because now you'd rather be on the receiving end of it and not the end getting attacked. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it, it, it's real, but I don't care what like really anybody thinks about it. It's like, my thing is, it's like, again, I feel like when you look at things from a grand scheme of things, um, like I... I feel like everything Xbox has to do, they have to do it at like a such a a level for things to for for them to get like average scores. They don't get the same passes that other you know publishers get. Um, and it's that popular. It's, I don't know if it's the Apple effect. I don't know what it is. Uh, but when it comes to their their games, uh, don't get the respect. Their even their legendary IPs don't get the respect that like. PlayStation's uh, uh, pillar IPs do like nobody respect the media doesn't respect Halo anymore. They don't um, show that love. They don't respect Gears of War. Um, they are forced to respect uh, Forza because there's there's nobody making racing games better than it's Forza like- or Forza Horizon. So that's the only one they really kind of give any sort of love. But anytime Xbox tries to experiment experiment with things, they uh, Xbox has so much diversity in games and and they're. Uh, attacking genres that other publishers aren't and it's like they don't they really just don't get uh, uh the respect and um and it's unfortunate it, it is really unfortunate it's like this year when you look at the like logistic things of it mm-hmm. i looked at the games besides like 16 final fantasy 16 every game this year came out was either just as good if not better than starfield so i can understand even why like something like sea of stars would get it over starfield because i felt like sea of stars did what they were doing and and they did what they wanted to better than than starfield did but it's just like when you look at, at at that like back in 2019 i think that was the year um the last uh um a Fire Emblem came out, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Phenomenal game. How Control get on over it? You can't sit here with a straight face and tell me that Jeff Keighley's relationship with Kojima is not the reason Death Stranding showed up on there. Because it wasn't, it, was, it didn't sell well. Remember, they didn't tell sales of that game. Yeah, it did not sell it well. It didn't review well. A lot of the industry was 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 like down the middle with it. Control did okay, but it didn't do great either. So how was like some? But 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 guess what? Both of those games have in common, Smith. They're on the board. No, the third person, over the shoulder <laughs> action adventure games. Because that's all the 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 board knows. That's all the board cares about. So if you're a racing game like Forza Horizon Five. That did phenomenal, or was it four? I can't remember which year it was that a lot of people got upset. No, if you are in the five, 2021. Yeah, if you are, you know, a Fire Emblem game, three houses that got a, let me check the Metacritic, and it was high. The Metacritic for three houses was was good. No, not three horse, uh, three houses. I think it was three. Yeah, three houses. There it is. So this one is an 89, and it was a 90 at the time. I remember that specifically. Great game. If you're a strategy game, don't matter how good your shit is. We're not putting it there. Don't matter how good of a racing game is, we're not putting it there. You can make the best strategy game known to man, the best RTS game known to man, we're not putting it there. But if you make a lukewarm action adventure over the shoulder that barely gets in the 80s you on game of the year my friend so someone explain that to me yeah yeah that, that, that i don't wonder yeah that is that is a, a a strange thing and like how is it that only certain genres qualify for the overall game of the year because remember 2021 um what should we call it? Um, it takes two one game of the year, and I'm not that, that was a 88, 89, or whatever uh rated game. Uh, but that was the year that uh 
you know, some decent games came out. That was when, you know, Deathloop was nominated, Psychonauts was nominated, um, and Forza Horizon wasn't nominated, but it was the, I think it was the highest rated game that year. Um, but it wasn't nominated. It actually was only probably nominated for like two things, um, which was, and none of them were, you know, the game of the year uh, situation. So, um, and when, when, when they talk about it and they go over it and they give us their version of why these games, mm-hmm. Jeff, Jeff, don't be making sense half the time. Oh, I don't choose these. But if you're looking at your your organization that is being ridiculed for this, why ain't you at least trying to do a checks and balance system? Yeah. Like, he never comes out there and explains to us how these people are picked. He never explains to us that there's a process to this. He doesn't even really explain how the process works. We just send them out and they play it. Explain to me, Jeff, why you have moved the dates. So, spy, so games like God of War can hit that, hit that date, but then you don't move it for every other game. Because when the industry itself, when Josh Sawyer was upset, he's like, look, I'm not saying Pendament would have been game of the year, but explain to me how the date was moved for other games, but not Pendament. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I saw that tweet. Did he, did he delete that tweet? No, I don't think he did. No, that... Um... It's absolutely uh, true. Um, the God of War came out on what's, uh, oh my God, Dave, the, the date was, a, for some reason, other games in the past that missed that date, they couldn't get the nomination, but they made sure that date was in place for um, um, a God of War. It, was it, was it uh, Ragnarok, right? Mm-hmm. When they did that, yeah. So again, like, um, I'm uh, I'm not a fan. Like again, overall of the nominations, uh, like I said, so many games came out this year, uh, and a lot of the nominations are re- like the same, the six same games, and it, it's like it just kind of disrespects the the quality of the releases that came out this year because I think those six games were not the best six games. That released this year. It just I I found several games uh, to uh, to be better, and, and it, it it comes down to just cons- consistency. You know, mm-hmm. any of these circumstances happen, just one of them people will be okay. You know, I get it. It's a coincidence. But you mean to tell me that you're switching days up? Mm-hmm. Uh, your your boy gets his game and game of the year nomination, and mm-hmm. had like it's literally one of the uh, one of the not the poorest reviewed game of the year but it's definitely nowhere near the top gears scored higher than that everything that should have been there scored higher than that it's like i said the game damn near missed the 80s mark how to get there but no one wants to ask those questions they want to turn every conversation Mm -hmm. into a console war instead of saying I just want the game awards to be something that gamers should feel proud of. Yeah. And if I see something that smells like shit, I'm gonna make sure there's not shit there. Like, no, absolutely. Good. Uh, good point. Good point for sure. Uh, Xbox. There was a thing where they, uh, for some reason, these articles was coming out about the, the, the sales. I know you did a video on this man. Um, and 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 we we don't have to spend too much time on here because there's two more things I just want to cover, but I know you did a video on that, but you kind of took a different approach um, in regards to their sales and and how it's being um, reported, and it is Xbox in a bad situation right now with the Xbox Series, being that they're I think they're trending just slightly slightly below the Xbox One in in, in no, sales. Three sixty is beating them right now too. Um. Right now, yeah, I, I don't know. We well, got to think uh, about the Xbox One uh, for like the first three years. I was told the Xbox 360. Oh uh, well, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I do think that it's a bad look, uh, but they didn't really have like they had games this year, but I, I wouldn't say they had anything to sell consoles. Yeah, you know, you need to at least have one game coming out every year that is that you need this console to play 
Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the main reasons people say Xbox has no games. See, even though then, you know, no one's arguing that they have no games. I, I feel like people, like I said earlier, they have plenty of games. It's just, I feel like they're they're lacking in the popular genre that PlayStation made, which is that over-the-shoulder, you know, action-adventure. And I think they really need a couple games in that that's, that's of quality. Mm-hmm. But besides Starfield, would you have bought an Xbox for anything this year? Good question. Okay. And Starfield, uh, even though Starfield was a good game to me, they they need a more casual type of game. Like yeah, they, the Call they of need Duty, a one A one B game. So, something that's graphically mm-hmm. intense and easy to comprehend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they, they need didn't Oonga have Boonga. They needed a. A Ooh, graphical, Umbuga, yeah, uh, a graphical yeah. Unga Booga game. They, like, they need a bro, should have been a bro co- uh, code game. I, I'm gonna say this. Uh, uh, probably not. Other than Starfield, I feel like Starfield was uh, what the one game you should have been buying, you know, an Xbox uh, for if you're, you know, and you don't have to have an Xbox. And you don't for have to. You have could play Xbox that on for, on PC. Yeah. Um, my thing to you then is 2024. We know pretty much the releases. Is any of those games? And we, uh, you would buy the Xbox Hellblade. for? You think Hellblade? I Hellblade won't get me to buy one if I didn't have one. Um, you know, and I'm more of a hardcore gamer. We're talking about the casual people. I think that's the reason they picked up Call of Duty. That's more. I think get them getting the the light uh, the marketing rights to Call of Duty not next year but the year after is going to do more than anything else would because. It's not a coincidence. Nine times out of ten, wherever that marketing rights is, they win the generation. Because people can sit there and say, Call of Duty outsells everything in like two months. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. Stuff that could have came out in January and Call of Duty's out for a week and outsells it. It's 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 a very popular game. Uh, but the thing is, is, they need more graphically and looking games. They just do. They... Uh, Hi-Fi Rush is a great game, but I wouldn't consider it a graphically candy-looking game. You know, I, that's why I think Hellblade will be that first one, as long as they make the the gameplay fun, that would actually generate some interest with it. Uh, you know, I, I think Obsidian's Avowed is going to be a good game, but I don't I don't know if I would consider that a game where you know people are just going to pick up an Xbox for. I think. Hardcore gamers will pick up an Xbox for it, but hardcore gamers, nine times out of ten, they already got an Xbox. Mm. At this point in the generation, they're trying to get casual people going over there. That's why they need to be harder on TikTok. They they need to advertise more on like these social medias. Because yeah. right now, all the jokes and all the stuff on, on 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 TikTok and stuff, it's people talking about PlayStation. You don't really see Xbox too much on, on social media. Yeah, um, yeah, that's where they, the thing is. They do need a, a game that like that's gonna get mass appeal. And 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 the thing is, is that something that PlayStation consistently done every every year. Better even, marketing rights too. Yeah, um, they need to definitely do that. I mean, hey, maybe they could surprise us with this freaking Grand Theft Auto thing. Maybe they snag the marketing rights for that. <laughs> how, how many PlayStations do you think was sold because of Hogwarts Legacy? Oh, a lot. It was like, I think Hogwarts sold every freaking PlayStation in February. Um, if they could snatch that Call of Duty, I mean, that uh, GTA, and I, I think Rockstar, they don't really need a platform to, to help promote their mm-hmm. games, but it's easy and free money, so they'll probably do it to some degree. Mm-hmm. I know PlayStation's always had a really good relationship with them, but it's just like, if there's anything that you drop the bag and drop another bag, it's this game. Yeah. Drop two bags if you got to. Hell, drop five. You know, hey. GTA 6 is would be huge for them if they're able to get that. Remember, Peter Peter Moore dropped that bag on GTA 4. You got to get the, 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 the tattoo, had the full marketing. You know what I mean? They they, they did it. The Rockstar doesn't have lo- don't have loyalty to no man. When they when they showed off uh Red Dead Redemption 2, where they show which version did they show off? Wasn't it the um, Xbox One X version? I don't remember. Um I think um yeah, I they the CEO of Rock Take Two has a good relationship with uh Phil Spencer and 
I know uh, this Xbox group don't really believe in marketing deals if it doesn't benefit Game Pass, but I think this is one of those situations where you you want your platform associated with this game, Game Pass or not. You want and to- I actually think Game Pass is the biggest issue Microsoft has. Uh, you know, my, Game Pass is a is a phenomenal service, but you should never revolve your whole company around it. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah and, I, I, and I feel like that's that's one of the reasons they don't market as much as they used to because they would rather market Game Pass everywhere. And I feel like that's the reason they don't get licensing or or timed exclusives or marketing deals because if they can't get those games in Game Pass, does it make sense? Yeah. Sometimes you do stuff that doesn't make sense to what you're going for because you know it's going to bring in more people. You know, does it make sense to some people to advertise on the Super Bowl when they don't know if it's going to get 100% of the people? Hell no. People know for a fact that there's a good chance that People seeing my shit on the Super Bowl commercial going to laugh at that shit. But there's also a good chance that there's millions and millions and millions of people watching it. I'm going to get someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I think you're you're, you're right about that. I don't think they should be revolving everything around uh, Game Pass. Because what happens is it muddies their... It's the reason why their their messaging is so, so so jacked up. They need to revolve their 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 company around around the ecosystem itself, yeah. and Game Pass is a pillar, along with the Xbox. Yeah. Um. So there was a whole lot. You know, people were happy for some days when uh, Tim Stewart came out and, and you know talked about the whole the Xbox being on you know other platforms their games they're everywhere and mentioned playstation and nintendo and people like oh xbox is going third party um and then obviously phil spencer's latest interview sort of kind of closed the door on some of the the rhetoric that was coming around that your take on what that that moment that because it was again it's, an, it's, it's the messaging and i know some of i think not, the communication with tim story it wasn't directed even at gamers i think this was like a seminar with like a bank or something like that like what is your thoughts on that look i think i think they're so concerned on saying the wrong thing that they're just being very open about interpretation look mm-hmm. um I feel them. Uh, I do think he should have worded his stuff better. Uh, but at the same time, like they just got over a big hump that they thought for a second they weren't going to get over. Mm-hmm. You know, it was looking very suspect when it comes to buying the ABK deal. Uh, you know, people say, well, they're still buying. And that's probably to a point. They probably are still buying. Uh, but if they do, what do you think is going to look bad? Yeah, did they come up? We're going to lock everything behind the, the, the Xbox, you know, Walls, walls, and if you want to, you got to buy an Xbox or get a PC. Mm-hmm. No, you want to sound as open as possible yeah. when you're doing this stuff. Because if you do go, because here's the thing, even not in gaming, they're going to have to talk to the, the FTC again, eventually. Yep. They're going to have to talk to these people again. Yep. So it's just like, what, what looks bad when you're talking about, we're going to do Call of Duty, it's going to be a 10-year deal. We're still very open to putting all our games on PlayStation when, you know, ABK games. And then, like, a month later, no, we, we locking this shit down. Like, it, it, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like, as a company-wise, you want to, you don't want to make definitive statements. And I think that was one of the issues he had. He, he was way too open about what was going on. And, you know, it comes down to, it's like, I, regardless of what he said, I think me and you can agree, Smooth, yeah. that their actions speak the opposite. Yeah. If that was the case... When they did the Call of Duty deal, they would have they would have them sign the old deal because they didn't yeah. care. It was going over there anyway. Yeah, yeah. but they did. They they went from one deal that said all ABK to another deal that said only Call of Duty. So if they had this plan, and this was a month ago, like a month and a half ago. Yeah. So if they had this plan, they would have gave them the the deal for everything because they wouldn't have cared because they're going third party anyway. Yeah, you know, no, no, you're right. And the thing is, it's like, I think people, I don't know what it is that people want from Xbox or why they're like, you know, hoping this thing happens. Like people wanting, you know, one thing we did find out though, Smooth. And what was that? The 
that people want Xbox games. They just don't want to play on Xbox. They just don't want to play on Xbox. It's just strange. Like I don't I don't know why for some reason like like the Xbox for some reason its mere existence is a problem uh to a lot of uh gamers. They do not want Xbox competing with PlayStation. They don't want Xbox as an as an option. Um, and it's like, it, it, so X, whether PlayStation wins or loses or whatever, or when it, or beating Xbox, like the hate, the level of hate for Xbox is just re ridiculous. Um, so you did a couple of videos. I, I, I seen some of the things ran said, and I tried to, uh, when we spoke briefly on the phone, um, trying to get, give your take. Xbox has told us essentially to watch the game awards. Why? I'm not commenting on it. Why not? I'm I, not commenting. I, I need like. I, I don't, I'm not commenting. I, the thing is, just to give you a heads up. I won't be able to watch it because it takes place the same day um, that I have to be away for the funeral services. So I probably I'm gonna miss it. But um, but I mean, you don't have to comment on it. if you know something. I, I don't expect you to tell me what you know. But like, you can tell me what you would. Xbox hope. will be there. Xbox will be there. Okay. Yeah, in a big they, way, small way, in a big way, like Xbox Series X reveal, big way, or like Perfect Dark uh, reveal. It's it, it's a game. It's a game. Okay. You won the game. Not answering that. <laughs> I'm not. I know there's a possibility for more than one game. I'm because yeah. I know there's trailers being floated out there. I just don't know what trailers. Like here's the thing. If it wasn't for the direct they did at the beginning of the year, I would say yeah. all these trailers are showing up to the mm-hmm. Game Awards. But they could be, you know, okay, we're going to show you this trailer, and we're showing you this trailer, but both of them aren't being announced at the same place. They don't tell you that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because what they do is they feed these to people, and they're like, how do you like it? And they go off of that. Uh, so, you know, if they they can easily do a direct in January, so they would strategically be showing these stu- these 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 cinematic trailers or whatever the trailers are they would show them at the same time but you wouldn't know where they're being shown at gotcha gotcha um well do you think we get a direct in january is is that normal or is that just know. because of that that was that year because the thing is i think it makes sense from like uh from a brand wise you know we know hellblade's coming out we know avowed's coming out uh, most likely Indiana Jones because uh, Todd Howard said that you know we're going to see more next year. I don't know if Indiana Jones would come out next year, mm-hmm. but there's a good chance we could see it at that event. Mm-hmm. So they got stuff to show, and the good thing is, especially Hellblade and Avowed, we don't know anything about the gameplay really. Uh, we've seen some uh, more on Avowed than the other one, but we got to need more information. The thing is, it's like, all right, so I know X- Xbox is sort of coming in. We, we got an updated uh, trailer for Stalker 2, which we know is an Xbox exclusive. It's coming to quarter one. Quarter one is January, February, and March time frame. So within the first three months, you got Stalker 2. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I'm assuming Hellblade 2 is quarter Q1, Q2. Um I mean, I hope they keep up with it and um, they, they they remain up to date with that. I don't want I don't want these one and done events. I feel like the XO was like, is it one and done or two and done? They did like two of them and that was it. Um, they now have the the content um, to have these uh, reveals and they're you know they're coming back to the uh, game awards. Last year they were highly criticized for not being at the game of the war the game game awards and um, but. They end up having, you know, a showcase the very next month, which kicked off the year. Um, and they were able to release like two games um, um, in that uh, in that period. So I think um, I think um, a direct an Xbox developer direct uh, should be coming. Uh, my thing is now also i think the uh, the other thing that we're all anticipating is that we already kind of you know the activision deal you know is done is closed the content rollout on that man when is this round table attic what, what um, 
I don't know if they even have one. You don't think they'll have one? I, I think the ABK thing might be a little bit different. But if they do have it, they'll probably wait uh, for the heat from the FTC thing to cool down. Because mm-hmm. the FTC could still pill. Mm-hmm. And maybe the stuff they say, they don't want the FTC hearing right now. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. Like, at this point, I don't care about the ABK stuff. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't matter if what they do with me. Okay. Well, fair enough. Um, there is the Suicide Squad Quill of Justice League. I feel like this uh, a, a announcement. I played it. How, okay. So there is... A, how do I get into the... Uh, is it over? Or did I miss it? I must have missed it. Uh, I don't know if it's over or not. Is it any? Uh, you can't speak on it, can you? Yeah, I can't speak on it. Shit, it's. There's a lot of people in uh, the community I saw playing it, so I'll just put it to you this way: I played it for an hour and a half. Like, I'm not playing it again. <laughs> oh my god, yo! Oh man, I'm sorry, dude. Oh. You... All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, man. So I right, we it's about time to wrap up our uh uh hour sixty minutes. Uh addicts, good to meet up with you. This show will be on uh Weapon Wheel Patreon soon enough. Uh there's no weapon wheel this week, so I'll probably be on the Xbox. We'll probably probably get some videos out there. Appreciate everybody for coming through, showing I'm love. I'm on ILP this weekend. All right, fair enough. Saul's not going to be there. All right. Yeah, because we, I think we're doing this week and next week, and then we're off till the 7th of January. Yeah, I, I need some time to also add pad games to my games beat list. I think I'm at, like, I think I'm literally under 20, which is, like, I which I don't care. But, um, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm only at 17. And the jam pack and a lot of games that I beat this year actually weren't even from this year. Um. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta get to it. Uh, but these are some quality games. Uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely, I definitely would uh, like to join um, the show uh, at uh, to some degree tomorrow. Um, I'll, I'll follow with you because I, I do have to do something uh, 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 for the wifey that I haven't um, done in a while. Well, you so. know, we go long, yeah. so just tell me if you, uh, if you ever want to jump on. Absolutely, appreciate it, Attic. Thank you guys for tuning in, um, Attic. You got anything to say before we get out of here? Yeah, go. Appreciate it for coming through. We we took two weeks off because Smooth's got had a death in the family. Uh, we'll 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 be back to the regular uh, programming. Uh, are we? Is that two weeks? Our two weeks off, or are we taking another an additional two weeks at the end of the month? Like, no, I'm not taking. Um, yeah, yeah. Those were the, I I plan to do the show to finish the year. Uh, with the show, okay. I mean, I'll be here. Um, next Saturday and Saturday after that, me look okay. at the calendar. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see why. Uh, what we'll do is we'll do something fun. Yeah, because I don't think there will be a lot of news. We'll mm-hmm. do something fun. Absolutely, like ranking shit or something. I don't know. Fair enough. Thank you guys for you know tuning in. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're near the side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace.